The first set of the day will be played on Naro Station. Spawning in the bottom left-hand position as the Red Protoss. It's Trap from SDX Soul. His opponent, the Terran player from Samsung Khan, spawning as Blue Terran on the top right position of the map. Coughing a little bit before the game begins. His name is Turn. You think he's alright in there? He's alright. Alright. Doesn't need a cough drop or anything like that? Nope. Alright. Just a typical turn. Typical turn. Does he always cough? Well, not sure about that, but at least he's not dying, so. And he's I still sure playing Starcraft. He, he didn't put down the PP, so we're all good. I guess so. We're gonna see that PP in the middle of the game, and he's like, like gagging in the booth. He's like, ah, I need a Alka Seltzer or something. We never had, actually, I want to say we never had an incident like that because uh, there was one particular incident way long ago, but I don't think anyone remembers uh, exactly what happened. So, uh, if, if you don't describe it, then yes, that's true. Well, there was uh, before the game began, the player actually went for the PP, and what actually happened is that he. A uh, player named Goodfriend, he said he wasn't feeling well, he, and he actually fainted before the game started, so they had to delay his uh, round of eight matches, I think, in OSL. Oh, wow. He must have really not been feeling well. Yeah, he just fainted in front of the fans, in front of the caster, in front of the referee. It wasn't a good day, but at least he did, uh, he did uh, recover from that and then played the rematch a few days after. Did he win, though? I do believe so. Oh, nice. All right, well, it looks like we already have a gas opening from our Terran player here. Pretty standard against Protoss nowadays, going for that early gas. You know, generally, maybe make a Reaper, go for a Fast Factory. It really depends on how Turn feels like playing this game. It's going to be something aggressive, but the tech path he chooses isn't always so clear until the game uh, develops a little bit. Yeah, so there's different, different ways to play aggressive. One is like, you know, go for the two racks and then try to get as many units as possible. Two is the Hellbat drops that we've been seeing a lot more lately. Oh, and certainly the Hellbat drops becoming pretty common in all matchups. We're seeing them everywhere, man. It's actually a really nice play, and against Protoss, if you, you know, you might start off with the Hellbat drop and then try to deal as much damage as possible. The tie style that we saw from yesterday but some of the other Terran players on ladder have been going for help as around uh, 15 minutes, 16 minutes when the Protoss player is not expecting such drop into the mineral line. They say, oh, it's going to be a Marine Marauder drop. I'm just going to warp in few zones, and then you have two help in your main base. That's true. We have a Reaper follow-up here from Turn, and at the same time, we got a Sneaky Probe over here. We may make some type of tech or just go ahead and scout. The Engineering Blade block at the natural with the Protoss player has also been something that we're seeing a lot more these days. Second gas being taken by Trap as well. And he's got a Stalker and Militia Core coming out. Probably will go ahead and take his, his expansion as soon as he can get this Reaper out of his main base and force that Engineering Bay to get cancelled. Oh, maybe not. The Stalker is already out on the map. That's Mother Core. Militia Core will go ahead and scare that Reaper away. The Stalker, though, prepared to potentially take out this. Oh, well, looks like Trap wasn't paying attention there. He could have killed off that Reaper. I guess he was focusing on somewhere else around the map. He does get a free scouting inside the main base of turn. However, I don't know if he saw the factory because the probe was inside the main base for a long time, but Trap, he should be able to scout it. That's interesting. So both players a little bit oblivious to what's going on in their opponent's base. The Stalker, though, moving up here into turn's base. This is actually a lot of pressure here that he may not be prepared to deal with because there's only SCVs out at this point. This one Reaper... I mean, it can kind of cut the Zealot all day, but this is the two, two Marines are out, and the one oh, Mothership War can more. take out the Marines right now, especially with the Stalker. The bunker is still not finished, and Trap is uh, getting a nice advantage earlier in the game with nice micro against the Marines. And that Marine, it's so close to dying, it does die. This Stalker looks like it will escape barely with its life here. This SCV from Turned continuing to chase it down. He's not afraid. We have a Nexus and Robo follow up here. That Stalker got up to six kills, by the way. Trap taking a very impressive lead early on in the game. Four Marines and two SCVs only into six minutes into the game. He must be feeling really nice as a Protoss player oh. at this point. And look at that. He scouts the tech lab on that factory as well, so you can assume that tanks are coming his way. Grabbing a forge behind this as well from our Protoss player. He's going to add on an extra gateway or two, it looks like. And just continuing to kind of start focusing on the macro portion of the game now. 
<laughs> Trap needs to be careful a little bit over there because the Stalker is not in a great position to take down the rocks. He doesn't want those to become suicide stalkers. Well, I guess he will. Well, he's going to have a long time to figure out that the Stalkers are going to get trapped under the rocks, but, you know, for now, it's okay. Yeah. So, tra Trap is feeling really comfortable right now. He killed two SCVs, four Marines with a single Stalker, a Mothership, and he didn't lose a single unit for himself, maybe except the scouting probe that was um, outside of the map early in the game. And he also has complete scouting on his opponent. Mm -hmm. That's true. Trap also placing a few proxy pylons around the map. Interesting that he killed those rocks, and then he's just going to go ahead and kill the extra destructible rocks there. I guess he wants to potentially take an expansion on the upper side of the map. He just doesn't want um, his units to be trapped at the natural when the Terran drop comes and the Terran player goes for the rocks right away. So he's preventing that trap play earlier on in the game so that he could take the third base in that such area. Trap doesn't want to get trapped. Basically. All right, well, it looks like Turn is going for an aggressive push here. He's got a good amount of Marines, two tanks. It almost looks a little bit like a Brood War style, just with a few more Marines than average. It looks like there'll be a Medivac to join them as well. We have Immortals being chronoed out, though, and that plus one armor on the way here. Trap should be safe here, and if this attack actually doesn't do a lot of damage, he will be able to punish Turn for taking such a fast third base. Actually, this might be bad for Turn because remember, the Force Fuels are over there, and all Trap needs to do is Chrono Boost out the second Immortal. Solid Force Fields there from our Protoss opponent here. And the Immortals are just going to go ahead and snipe down those tanks. Focus firing down them down. The Protoss player loses all of his sentries here, but he does manage to kill off the tanks. But the Marines actually are going to be able to do a lot of damage. And the only reason why this is doing so much is because it's such an offbeat timing from turn here. Trap will defend now. Trap had nice force fields, but turns firepower was really strong. If it wasn't for the force fields, then Trap might actually have lost a lot more, but thank god he only lost the gateway army instead of the immortals or the probes. Yeah. Trap continuing to place these proxy pylons around the map. I think he wants to get very aggressive, uh, you know, maybe in another few minutes into the game here. He's getting his plus one right now, adding a few more sentries into his army comp because he did lose them to that timing attack with the tanks and the marines. Also going for a twilight tech while our Terran player continues to build up his bioforce. His plus one is just about to finish and he's also grabbing stim. Yeah, well, putting down the forward pylon is not a bad decision for him. It does scout the medivacs going towards the 12 o'clock position, but it's not, well, it's not going to scout the one that's going inside the main base, but Trap is already well fortified. However, Trap, since he was making a mortals, he doesn't have that many observers out on the field, which means that he's not going to be able to scout the third base on the right side, nor inside the main base. Well, fi he does finally. Yeah, it does. It basically, it wasn't scouted, and then they took the camera off that position. They went back, and it was scouted. That's what happens if I don't have my own personal computer to watch the game. <laughs> uh, so it looks like this medevac over here, it's looking for a position to drop in trap space. He just can't find it, though. It's kind of like, you know, maneuvering all around. Mm -hmm. Trap's covered at every position, every important position. And because he only has two bases here, very easy to pretty much cover everything. You know, we're seeing continued... Um, Chrono boosts going down on this robo, which leads me to believe that we're going to see a timing here. Um, you don't normally see this many immortals out on the map. Well, he did start out with the immortals after seeing the uh, the siege tanks coming out from turn, and it's not a bad idea because now he's thinking the main army composition from his opponent. It's going to be bio plus tank. He's going for the Colossus would have been uh, not a great decision by Trap at that point, and now since he knows that he could get a timing. He's going to be going for pure Archons, but the Archon needs to join the fight instead of firing on <laughs> the factory. A bit of a waste of time there. Now, look at the supplies here. 107 to 108. Very even. The Terran player does not want to have an engagement here. And he's he probably going to be ahead on workers as well. Yes, he is definitely ahead on workers because he's well saturated on three bases. So now it's Turn's turn to defend against Trap's aggression. All right, it looks like Turn realizing what's going on. He's going to go ahead and back up here, bringing the SCVs off the mineral line to try to defend. He has to make this work here. We need to see some force fields from our Protoss player. We have three good ones, but not good enough here. There's enough Terran army to defend against this without AoE. I don't think this is going to work, but behind this, we're seeing a third base from a Protoss player. Oh, wow. At the same time, Zealots in the main base doing a good amount of damage. This Immortal too slow. We'll get picked off here. Our Protoss player now behind is 79 to 107 supply. It's kind well, of 16 SCVs killed. Not bad. It's not 
Not bad at all for a trap, but certainly not devastating for a turn either because he had the three command standards up for a long time. His opponent is just securing his third nexus. So all turn needs to do right now is just drop the mules, get the SCVs up once again. And he's fine because he actually defended against a strong timing attack from his opponent trap. He killed one Archon, three Immortals along with it. Now that's true. He did a lot of economic damage there, but it, I mean, oh, actually more Zealots in the main base here. Mm, Turn's, turns. got to move his the SCVs away immediately here. He's got some units to defend against that, and I, it looks like well. Turn, he wants to do a big counterattack right now. If Trap can delay until Storm is out. He should be able to defend against this, but he needs the energy in order to do so. He needs the energy and the time for it. Storm to finish. The Storm is going to finish <laughs> if Trap, uh, excuse me, Turn decides to go for the dirt base at the 6 o'clock base, but Turn is getting a lot of units out right now. Did Turn just kill his own Marine there? I think so. I that. just wanted to ignore it because it was such a stupid mistake, but hey. It, did, it was funny, man. It was funny. Uh-oh, it was funny. High Templar, do they have the energy of the storm here? I think he's trying to fiend pressure there. A few more zealots warping in here, and the Mothership Corps, time warp going down here. Are we going to see that psionic storm? Yes, the storm connects there, does a good amount of damage. And Net now it looks like Turney's forced to back up here. There's a lot of charge lots in this mix. The That's a lot of Marauders for both plays. players. The Marauders... They can kite the Zealots somewhat, but the problem is the Zealots do a good amount of damage, but the reinforcements are going to force our Protoss player back now. But does he have enough energy for another Storm here? Well, he doesn't have the second energy just yet. And even if the Storm goes down, it's a heavy Marauder oh. composition and turns saying, well, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make this work. This is going to be a very close timing here. All Trap has to do is defend, and he'll be victorious here. But if he can't defend against this attack, Obviously, he loses the game. He won't have the economy. He won't have three bases. We only have a pair of our, a few archons and zealots in here. Good time warp going down. But the problem is, where is the AOE in this army composition? These archons are going to melt to all of these bio units. Heavy marauder composition, which means that the charge us. You can kite against them all day long with a concussive shell. And now, tur trap he overextended with this initial zealous. He knows that he lost the game going. Well, if I just regroup one more time, then I would have defended against the attack fine, and I would have actually won the game. Uh, just to, he needed to use the High Templar. He had that tech. He couldn't buy the time, and turn with his very aggressive style, was able to take out his opponent before he could stabilize, and that's the strength of a player like Turn. GG! Samsung Khan takes game number one. It was such a risky move by Turn, but his micro and the unit composition paid off as his Marauders were shelling away on all of the Zealous Trap did overextend to the middle of the map and Turn took advantage of that. As soon as he didn't see that many Gateway Army left by his opponent, he pulled few of the SCVs to even support the main army. So Turn with that double-edged sword play style, he made it work for him that game. Looked risky at times, but he defended against the attack. So the score, one to zero with Samsung Khan in the lead over STX Soul. Don't go anywhere, guys. We will be back after this commercial break. <laughs>